Gray Area talks about sex, relationships, mental health, and more. The views and opinions expressed on the show are those of the talent and guests alone and are provided for informational purposes only. We want to talk to you, but our hosts are not qualified healthcare professionals. If you're depressed, feel your life is at risk, or need immediate assistance, please seek professional help or dial 911. And this is Gray Area. What's good, everyone? I'm dumbfounded Sasha's co-host. So do you have any big plans for this weekend? I know you went skydiving last weekend. That's insane. I did. I think I'm going to have to keep it chill this weekend. Um, I only like to cross off a life goal just once a month. All right. So what else is on that list then? Uh, let me see. What else we got on this little bucket list of mine? Oh, visit Machu Picchu. Yes, me too. A lot of people have that on their list. I've always wanted to go there. I actually went to Peru, but I didn't get to do it because you didn't do the most lit life. thing you can do in Peru nope you already know it so when you were young did you have a lot of goals like that like things you wanted to try before you were a certain age be things I wanted to try no things I wanted to accomplish I definitely wanted to make a million dollars before the age of 30 okay turns out it's mad hard to do that right <laughs> it's super hard to do that and I, I'm, I'm kind of glad you know it didn't happen. Yeah. All right. Well, when I, I mean, I thought I would still be in the adult industry, but like behind the scenes when I was 30, I mm. thought I would be like running a production company and getting behind the camera and then also producing indie films. And I actually did produce a few films, but I thought I would still be in it. I was like in it for the long haul, but things changed drastically in a very short period of time. And now we're here. Yeah. It's for the better. I would say, I mean, you're here on the gray area. This is your show. And I'm mean, sometimes you got to let the universe work for you and not fight it for sure and i know if i had a million dollars before the age of 30 knowing my, how bad i am with my finances it would have turned out really bad i yeah. could see that yeah, i really could see bad. that well i feel like when we were kids we never take into account that we may, might be a late bloomer so that's what we're talking about today there's so much pressure to have things figured out by the time you're 20 and that's pretty unfair maybe you don't hit your best self until later in life so is there an actual age where we're supposed to be grown up or have arrived even? I feel like a lot of that is society's pressure, mm -hmm. you know, and things are changing. People are having kids later or getting mm -hmm. married later on. So I don't like that. Let those things affect the way, um, you know, the, put a lot of pressure on me and make me want to accomplish it so quick. You yeah, know? I think we're similar in that way. We both kind of went, went, went with our spirit and yeah. chase our own goals and our own dreams in a different way in an unconventional way you got to savor it savor the all the all the journey we're going through definitely for sure well our guest tonight is a quintessential late bloomer he was well into his 30s by the time he and his kogi truck took la by storm and started a full-on food revolution since then he's been named chef of the year opened up critically acclaimed restaurants he's an author and host The Chef Show. I love it, it's on Netflix. Please welcome the sickest chef on the planet, Roy Choi. I don't know if you know who I am, but that's okay. We're just gonna cook. My name is Roy Choi. I represent the Kogi truck. You know what happens to be the best restaurant in America? Some of us are lucky to get a second life. There are moments and opportunities where you hit it later. It's just for feeding people, that's it, man. You know, most of the restaurant businesses are shut down, so this has forced us to go back to the streets where we were born. The roots. I hope you enjoyed this. Peace. Hey! Hey! Roy Choi, make some noise! <laughs> All right, yo. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, we go way back, actually. Way back. We're way just talking back. about this like a decade now. Yeah, at least a decade. And I think we come from the same neighborhood, so we we're connected in other ways. K-Town? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's kind of terrible that I've known you for 10 years and I'm still a terrible cook. <laughs> really? I, I, I cannot Man, come cook. on. Step we your game up. 
<laughs> Gotta I know. Sip the game up. I guess it's like, yeah, he never taught me how to rap and I never taught him how to cook. Okay, that's fair enough. That's I, fair I enough. I just want to mention one thing. I remember 10 years ago when we first met, mm -hmm. uh, I, I was doing shows in Los Angeles in small yeah. venues. And I remember one distinct story where you came to one of the shows and you came backstage and me and a bunch of underground rappers that were there, yeah. you just had a jacket filled with burritos. <laughs> yeah. You had a jacket. It was like, what's that movie, Mari El Mariachi or Desperado? Yes. Except he just had burritos. I was Danny of guns. Trejo. Oh, that was Danny Trejo. I'm jealous. Danny Trejo, but with it burritos. It was crazy. He just yeah. pulled up with a stick jacket. I'm like, it's kind of hot in here. That's like, a move. I got the burritos, homie. Yeah. That's a move. And he fed us. Yeah, it was great. That was my thing for a while. You know, we all have to have like our own stick or our own thing. Yeah. My thing was bringing burritos to rap shows. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So you're truly responsible for putting food truck culture on the map and elevating street food from trucks to multiple restaurants, both in LA and Vegas. Mm -hmm. And right now the industry is taking a big hit like many yeah. industries. So like tell everybody how Kogi is doing. Kogi has been okay. And that's because of our fan base. And so I wanna give you a big hug and a big kiss. I love you. Um, we have a, we have a, you know, we're, we're a culture. Kogi's a culture. so. When everything hit the fan, the, our fans stepped up, you know, because we go to every neighborhood nook and cranny in Los Angeles, all the way out to like Pomona, Diamond Bar, to Granada yeah. Hills, down to Long Beach. And um, everyone kept showing up for Kogi. The one thing that did we, we did take a hit on is catering. So the one thing yeah. that food trucks do that a lot of people don't know is we do a lot of like private parties. Yep you know, uh, rap parties, release parties, all that stuff. And all that stuff's over because Hollywood had to shut down, so. Yep. I, I wanted to ask you, I mean, this is obviously a tough year. Would you yeah. say this is your hardest year of your career or was there even a tougher year than this? Um, for me personally, I'm. it's not, it hasn't been my hardest, but like for me emotionally, it's mm -hmm. been hard mm -hmm. because one, I ha you know, I'm very connected to the streets and the whole, the whole social justice movement and yeah. situation and the inequality right now that right. stuff wears on me every day and then i have employees you know I'm, I'm the leader of restaurants and you know hundreds and hundreds of people and just them not being able to get back to work but me personally man i've been thriving creatively like i've been able to find you know a little lane you know yeah i'm, yeah. Right, I'm writing i'm Oh, wow. Yeah. What, what are you writing? Of, haikus, I'm, I'm, I think. Yeah, right? I'm writing no, no, no. haikus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Food Just haikus. writing stories, you know, yeah. trying to cool. create, like, scripted content and, like, you know, shows like this, you know, different nice. ideas and stuff. Yeah. So we know when you were very young, mm -hmm. your family took you to a spiritual leader who told you some things about your future. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that for the people that don't know? You guys. With, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right, we got one down. We got right, one. Go. All right. um, you guys mess with uh, spirituality and uh, yeah. shamanism and like uh, you know stuff like that. It's something that has been in my life forever, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom kind of has it, and I feel like I have it a little bit. Like Kogi, the early days, I was able to see things before they happened. Like I wow. was able to see the corners and the spots before they blew up, and wow. I was like, we're gonna park right there. So it's always been like right there, but. When I was messing up in my 20s, um, my mom went to the fortune teller to be like, you know, what's gonna happen to my son, you know? And I'm like, in Korea, like I'm the last son of like thousands of years of the last, my last name. And so they're all worried and everything. And my, the fortune teller told them, I see your son in a parking lot surrounded by people and he, in a has money, lot? he has money in both hands and he's eating something. And she's like, all right. So he's going to be a wow. valet parking guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be a valet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said. be the greatest valet parker there ever yeah, was. It was. Oh, Maybe no. I own the valet business. But um, but yeah, and it came true. And that was Kogi. That's but it took crazy. it took like, you know, 10 years for that to materialize. Yeah. But it's crazy how um, shamans can see that because it, it, it also reinforces that Maybe reality is not just this one reality. Maybe mm -hmm. there are multiples that are going on. It's not necessarily future. It's like it's all happening, and they're able to simultaneously. Pull. Right? Simultaneous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, did that put that? Did that put pressure on you? Like, I don't know if I would want. Um, I don't know yeah, if I want to know be that. Like, but you're I mean, gonna be the Moses of tacos. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of pressure right there. Pressure. Did you think about it a lot, or did it just kind of live with you? Um, no, I, I lived under a lot of pressure because I. Um, I didn't find my lane until later in life, you know, until my late twenties when um, I started cooking. Uh, but I wasn't fortunate like like you guys were. You guys came on the scene when you're younger, um, and especially you as an artist, you were able to express yourself. I couldn't express myself that way, so 
And then I couldn't prove to my parents that I had a creative vision, you know? Right. You know, because I didn't have anything to prove. And then so there was a lot of pressure. They're like, why don't you just get a job or become a professional or be a CPA or something? Uh. Yeah, you know? And so, <laughs> That's common. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, it was a lot of pressure. So that drove me into a really dark place for, for, for about six, seven years, like from when I was like 20 to like 26 or seven. Yeah, you know? I, I mean, I think a lot of people are yeah. feeling that right now, especially yeah. economically, socially, like you're yeah. saying too. Uh, what, do you think there is any one thing that helped you get out of that? Because for some people, yeah. they don't have that community necessarily. I mean, I really wanna like take this moment. That's a great question. I really wanna take this moment to acknowledge that not everyone can get out of it. And there is depression and there's struggle. Yeah. And that stuff is very real. And um, you know, we, ha we have to appreciate and, and be sensitive to all that. For my situation, it was, it was a very unique moment where um, I had a, a out of body experience. Wow. I was like, I was couch surfing at that time and I was in an apartment not too far from here in Palms. And um, I was a mess up, man. I was like, I was in K-Town every night just getting in fights, you know, yeah. I was taking other guys, girls, you know, I was just like doing crazy oh, stuff. Yeah, you know, like my homies, I was burning bridges. I was just yeah. self-destructive. Yeah, just self-destructive. And I was just, I was literally like down to my last couch, you know, that wow. I could that, that I could ask a favor for. <laughs> the last couch. <laughs> the last couch. That's a show day right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, I had an out of body experience. I can't explain it any other way. It's um, I was on the couch like this, lying down, and the Emerald Show came on, and I just felt like he came out and like grabbed me and <laughs> Emerald, bam, snap out, yeah. <laughs> snap, snap out of it, snap out of it, and uh, I snapped out of it. And um, I went to night school here in West Hollywood and mm. started to learn how to cook. Uh, applied to school in New York, and then things just started falling in place from there. You know, I've, I've had a few out of body experiences on couches before. Yeah, there you go. There you doing go. what? <laughs> doing <laughs> what? Let's not talk it about wasn't that. a career change. <laughs> yeah. Let's get real. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk quickly about um, hashtag Keep Kogi Alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, is that something? Uh, well, explain that. That came from the pandemic. You know, um, the pandemic hit us all in March. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was one of those things where. Um, we didn't have a plan. We didn't know what was next. And we we were honest, you know, the thing about the restaurant business and even more the food truck business, we're like one, we got like one week of reserves. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you know, and if it rains all week this week, like we could be done. Mm. Yeah. And so, you know, couple that with the pandemic, um, we didn't know if we were gonna make it to next week. Right. And so I was sitting kind of depressed and I was sitting, we, were, we started delivering free food to clinics and frontliners and um, hospitals. And um, we were just doing what we could. And I was sitting in the parking lot in Skid Row after I dropped off burritos, actually. Yeah. A whole tin of burritos. And um, I just wrote this post uh, on Instagram, kind of like this emotional, like viral post. And it went viral. And um, that's when Keep Kogi Alive came about. And it was yeah. like, you know what, let's, let's, if this thing is gonna be honest, let's flip the idea of uh, profit and economy. And so instead of trying to just sell food, let's, you guys donate food, you donate money, and we'll take your money, and I'll be the oversight committee, and we'll go give this food to people that need it. So nah. we started doing, Yeah. I, you saw in the video, we started doing drive-throughs, where we'd have thousands and thousands of people that just lost their job in Whittier, up in the valley, you know, um, come through. Uh, we did a huge one with the LA Galaxy in Carson. Yeah. It helps wow. all sides. All it helps all sides. I mean, that's, that's beautiful. Amazing. Yeah, yeah we started feeding beautiful. hospitals, clinics. Cool. You know, the, the biggest thing is the clinics in Skid Row. Yeah. You know, yeah. they, 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 out of the chain of command of like uh, healthcare, they get the least um, benefits, you know. Yep, sure. that is yeah. true. Um, so we've got live chat actually right here. Okay. The fans are watching, they're commenting. Um, everybody is just showing you so much love and oh, really? uh, oh. really respecting oh, your voice and encouraging them. Um, we have a message though from Sobrius. What's up, man? I've been debating going back to school to get an associate's degree, but I still don't have any direct career in mind. Is it worth going back to school without a clear path? So my first instinct would be to say yes, absolutely, because yeah. You get your GE done, your general education done, and while you're there, hopefully you'll meet people that inspire you mm -hmm. to choose a path. Yeah. Yeah, how about you, Roy? You well, the theme is late bloomer, you know, yeah. and um, I'm, I'm a late bloomer, you know, um, and regarding this question, like culinary school saved my life. You know, yeah. like I went to culinary school when I was 26 going on 27, and by that time I had been through so much that I was about to give up on myself, you know, yeah. like, um, and 
And then I went to culinary school and it completely changed everything. And it, it, it led to me being able to take care of other people. So I would say yes. Yeah, you know nice. what I mean? Absolutely. Well, whatever platform you're on, we want to know what you think. So hit us up and let's get into it. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the most awkward time in our lives. And it's not waking up after a one night stand. It's puberty. We'll be back in three minutes. Just enough time for you to shave that peach fuzz. <laughs> Sasha Gray with me, our dumbfounded and the one and only Roy Choi. Yes. So that girl was like, I mean, she's on it. She's killing it. Yeah. I don't think she has anything to be ashamed of. Nah, you're too busy to have a boyfriend when you're accomplishing all those goals right there. Seriously, like, could she have done all of those things being held down? I don't know. It's That's a new world, and it, I think it's really inspiring to see young women um, accomplishing so much at a young age. And, yeah. Now you can, you know, you still have your life to live. Go for it. Yeah, for yeah. real. Well, we're getting to the bottom of what it really means to be a late bloomer. And uh, let's talk about one of the cringiest kind of uh, first things where we see a drastic change, and that's puberty. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 15, 14, 15 years old. I was a late bloomer there, for sure. I don't yeah. know about you guys, but <laughs> my friends look like my uncles by the time I was oh. in puberty. <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad. For sure. I, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat as you, you know, like I was... Physically, definitely a late bloomer. Uh -huh. The last set of all of my friends to go through puberty. Yeah. But I think it's a double-edged sword, you know, there because one of my best friends growing up, she went through puberty super young. Yeah. We were still in elementary school. Right, right. That's, um, a, that's the one thing I learned now as an adult, like that puberty has such a wide range. Like I thought everyone, we all go through it at like 13, but like some go through it at like 11, some at 16. Yep. Right. You know? It's crazy. So we want to hear from you. Tell us about your experience. Our poll question tonight is, in what way are you a late bloomer? Puberty, love life, finances, job, or general adulting? Click on the link to vote or type your answer right into the chat. So what do you what do you think is, is going to be the most popular vote there? Um, I know for me, general adulting is something I was a late bloomer on. I'm yeah. still <laughs> learning how to adult right now. That, that will probably be it. I, I think maybe puberty or adulting, you know, of like being responsible and, mm. you know, um, maybe not people equate it with not having fun or whatever, right? Know, or figuring things out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Definitely puberty for me. Puberty. Yep. I was way too serious from a young age. I was like, gotta do this, <laughs> gotta do that. Uh, I mean, so let's talk about the the original um, late blooming, I guess, puberty. Um, I mean, in in high school, I I felt a lot of pressure, I guess, to get through that. I don't know why. You know, yeah. it's a lot of like your friends kind of picking on you a little bit. Definitely. Did you feel that as well growing up in high school? Oh, for sure. I had a friend that was like, oh, you'd be cute if you were a boy. And Ooh. I was like, damn. <laughs> OK, your brother's cute. You probably look just like him. Wow. Like, oh, oh, man. Wow. That, <laughs> what? And that type of stuff sticks with you forever, it, I'm, right? I'm telling you guys right, right. now, exactly. Well, the confidence and well, well, I mean, yeah. what was high school Roy like? Or middle school Roy I, like? I, I went, I had it, I had a double, I had a double double because, um, I was going through puberty. My parents moved us from LA to Orange County. Ooh. So my whole, I had a whole culture shock on mm. top of everything else. And um, man, you know, and I don't know, like this is the sexiest Asian man alive. You and, oh, <laughs> you, you and Theo. You heard it, y'all. <laughs> yeah, you heard it. But you and Theo, maybe, you know, from. <laughs> from Damn, from, yeah, you know? gassing me <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But Asian shirt. men, like a lot of girls don't go, you know, for Asian guys in high school and junior high. So it was like, yeah, man, it was tough. And plus you're going through puberty and you got the peach fuzz and yeah, you know, yeah, you're trying yeah. to figure your whole body out. And, I'm gonna you know. guess like. Uh, so I started smoking. <laughs> That's yeah, how yeah, I dealt with puberty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, did I you, feel that. Yeah. Did you grow up in like the concert or when you moved, was it to the like really conservative part of Orange County? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I moved to the suburbs, uh, conservative, mostly, mostly Caucasian. Yep. It was yep. cool, man, because yeah. it, it, it exposed me to different music. I made I made lifelong friends, um, exposed me to a different style. I always look back and say that um, as much as 
the move was tough at that time. It helped me be who I am now because I can cook for so many people. Because I understand mm -hmm. what it's like to be surfing in Newport Beach. I understand what wow. it's like to be hanging out in Watts. I understand what it's like to be yeah. partying yeah. in K-Town. So it's like that helped me cook for a lot of people. But it was tough when you're 13. Definitely, yeah. I want to ask that because I think for some of our viewers that are not from here, they might correlate like Orange County with Hollywood just based yeah. on what they see on TV. But for those of us that are from California, it's a it's its, its own other world. Yeah, and really. Orange County is not just what you see, you know, in the hills or on the OC and stuff like that, yeah. or, or Republican or Orange Curtain. Orange County is kind of grimy too, man. It's got a lot of blue yeah. collar, a lot, a lot of culture. Um, a lot, you know. Every oh. block has a different story. Every block, Every yes. block has a different story. true. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, so a big part of puberty is sex. And I think mm. Roy and I both agree that food is one of the best ways to get the juices flowing. That legit sounds gross. And <laughs> yeah. if food is like sex, then I'm pretty bad at it, I guess. <laughs> All right, we have Gianni joining us. He's looking for some help cooking a meal for a date, and we've Ooh. got the right man to help him. What's up, Gianni? Hey guys, what's up? We got an episode of well. Gianni at home right now. Let's yeah. go. Uh, <laughs> Who's your date with? So I have this Tinder date with a pastry chef. So I'm kind of looking for a recipe that's like really mature and I can pull off even though I'm kind of like an average cook right now. Okay, okay. so what's in your fridge? All right, let's take a look. Oh, um, yes, all right. So interestingly, we have a good assortment. We have some kimchi, pesto, chicken stock, sriracha, pineapple juice. Eggs. Mm. Um, a, a, eggs, a good amount of stuff. Oh, well, is it, I'm sure there's, you said, um, so let's, let's talk about your date a little oh, bit yeah. so we can figure out what he might like, right? Like, uh, is there any restrictions on dietary restrictions here with your date? Um, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, he, we haven't really talked that much about like any like restrictions or anything. Um, it, like we just kind of like met on Tinder and we were like, this is a cool date idea because we've been FaceTiming a little bit. But um, yeah, it should be interesting. I think he's open to whatever, but he's going to cook me some pastries hopefully after. Yeah. Oh, What's in oh. the freezer? What's in the freezer? Um, we have some goiza, some orange chicken, chicken fried rice, ice cream. That might be something he can do. Uh, we have the frozen watermelon. You got a whole Panda Express in there. Yeah, right. you got a panda. Is that the Panda? You work yeah. at Panda Express, bro? Yeah, yeah. Just some yeah. Panda Express, man. You're good. Should I go for it? No, no. Go? Okay, wait. For, for first Gander, Roy, is yeah. there some stuff he can work with in there? What I saw think? some kimchi in there. I mean, that I'm, I'm actually impressed with how much food you have in your refrigerator. So, yes, there's plenty to work with there. Um, I saw you had kimchi and butter and pasta and pesto. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think something that always can impress someone on a date is a good pasta. You know, a really well done pasta al dente with a sauce that is not broken, that is um, very luxurious and creamy. Mm. So I, I would, and especially if there's a surprise. So mm -hmm. I think that you can make a version of like um, a pesto cream or cacio pepe um, with black pepper and all those spices, but with kimchi. So cook your kimchi, car chop and cook your kimchi with butter and then a little bit of the pasta water and some chicken stock. Yo, Roy, that sounds hard as yeah. hell, bro. What do you mean? Oh, like, kimchi. All he's got to do is he's cook a little bit. Like, kimchi with you, butter. Like, three different like the... languages. You could do cocho pepe with the kimchi. <laughs> like, you got to use three languages kimchi, right now, bro. Kimchi, butter, I, and what? Kimchi, kimchi butter? Okay, kimchi, butter, pasta chicken, water. Chicken, chicken stock. stock. Just kim okay, okay. cook this, it and puree it. Does this sound doable to you, Joe? I think I can handle it. I'm going to do my best. All right, so test that out, and then... When you get that going, we're going to keep hanging out with Roy and then get back to you and see how it's going. No pressure at all, of course. Awesome. Zero. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Good luck. All right, see you later. On that. All right. All right. So don't forget. Don't forget. We have the poll going. Chat's right here. And when we come back, we'll put Roy in the hot seat. And it might be okay to be a late bloomer, but it's not okay to be late coming back to the show. You have three minutes. Get going. Get, grab a snack. And we'll see you right back here. Yeah. yeah.
Welcome back to Gray Area. We're here with my friend, Sasha's friend, and the world's friend, Roy Choi. <laughs> okay, voting is closed on our poll. We asked, in what way are you a late bloomer? Puberty, love life, finances, job, or general adulting? And here's what you said. Puberty, 3%. Love life, 43%. Finances, 13%, job, 16%, and general adulting, 25%. Wow. wow. There are wow. a lot of lonely people out there. Um, oh, they what was 43%? Love, love life. life. Oh, yeah, damn. Love yeah. life. A lot I wasn't expecting that. Love-related things are always, like, top on the polls. I think we, I think we're just the generation of divorced parents, too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think that probably has a lot to do with it and economic insecurities on top of it all. People, yeah. I mean, that's the one thing people always say you're late on, right? It's like, or, or your parents giving you that pressure. Why aren't you married? Yeah. Why don't you have kids yet? There's a lot of societal pressure. But it's a, that's a weird act because with all the dating apps that have come in the world, mm. love is still the thing that people are looking for. Yeah. Or, or you know, the for most. For sure. Yeah, it's everyone's crazy. looking for the love of their life. And then that you can't force that. Nope, it takes yeah. time. sure can't. <laughs> it will find you. All right, Roy. So it's time to put you in the hot seat with a game we call 20 and 60. Dumb's okay. gonna fire off 20 questions and we're gonna see how many you can answer in 60 seconds. Oh, man. We're taking you back to those early days when you're fresh out of culinary school, working at Le Bernardin. Can you handle it? <laughs> okay. Is that even, I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. We were like debating Sasha, how to right? like, can I just do this funny? Cause I'm gonna mess it up either way. Okay, here we go. <laughs> 20 and 60 starting now. Hooking up with an ex, good idea or bad? Good. <laughs> who's, a, who's a historical? Good if it's good. Yeah, who's a historical figure you crush on? Historical figure I crush on uh, Martin Luther King. <laughs> Would you ever date a fan? I'm married, but if I wasn't married, uh, yes. Favorite game of all time? Uh, Defender. What did your the parents? What did your parents call you when they were mad at you? Yeah, that's a bad word to create, by the way. I won't, yeah, tra I won't translate, translate that. That would be really later, bad. I, later. At what age did you start shaving? Uh, 13, 14. What has been your worst decade? Uh, it was the, the 90s. What has been your best decade? Now. If you could go back to being 20, would you do it? Yeah. I had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you flossed? Uh... Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the money or all the love? Uh, all the love. Biggest non-keto oh. craving because we know, oh, we're out of time, but this is the last question because I know you're on keto right now. Yeah. Uh, what's the biggest non-keto craving? Man, I want an instant ramen right now so bad. Instant, instant ramen. ramen. So bad right Korean now. Korean instant ramen yeah. unmatched. Oh. It is Gotta like Michelin-level food yeah. for instant stuff. Definitely is. For real. Definitely is. I would eat it for breakfast in high school. Yeah, and um, I, don't know why. I like how we have this like worst decade question that just like you can't really have that for like the 18 year old TikTok uh, <laughs> guest. Yeah. You, you, you know don't what I mean? Know. You know. have to experience this more life. Yeah. This is for the more of the mature eye. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Big mature have... guest, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you have to experience more life, which brings us into our next topic failure. We're gonna talk about failing because I feel like how we deal with failure might be the key to our eventual success. And mm. I have to say, like, in my opinion, I think like you're joking, but it's the truth. When when you're young and you haven't gone through that first big fail of your life, it's an abstract. Mm. So you have nothing to compare it to. So what do you think when it comes to failure? Did it help you eventually? Like, did I mean, it make yeah. you stronger? Yeah, I'm, I'm a pro at failure. And uh, it took me all my failures to figure out, you know, who I was gonna become with Kogi, you know? Even though mm. it wasn't like up here, it, it, it took all that to figure out. but. It's a lot of pressure because life and society doesn't allow room for you to fail. You're supposed mm -hmm. to hit it on, on the first at bat, you know? Right. Like whatever it is, even if it's not being famous, even if it is like you're supposed to get a job right out of college or you're right. supposed to get into college yeah. or you're supposed to, you know, whatever. If you're if you're an artist or whatever, you're supposed to hit it on your first album, mm -hmm. you know? Um, That's supposed to, right? Yeah, it's, it's supposed it's to. It's in our crazy. language yeah. so much and yeah. it's so weird because like, are we really supposed to do anything? Yeah. Like, and it's so much pressure, that word. Yeah, and then if you get it sometimes, then you have the sophomore blues, you know, where right, especially right. for artists where they're so big and then uh, there's so much expectation and then sometimes the failure comes from people judging them now. And so 100%. it's tough, it's really tough. It's, it is a lot of pressure. You can't do anything right. It's like we make yeah. fun of one hit wonders. Yes. Like you have to, sure. you like, have to, you have to. At least they did it, for sure. I, I mean, like, 
I actually, my first big failure was a production company I had started mm -hmm. when I was still in the adult industry. And yeah. I mean, it was like a year of my life invested, which at the time felt like everything. And I like was losing sleep and, but it was worth it, you know, because I put all of my heart and soul into it. But after that experience, I feel like I could take on anything. And it taught me so much about myself. And like, I'm not the kind of person that is a, like, I don't stay positive naturally. Yeah. Like I have to reflect and realize and check myself. Like you need to get up and you need to try harder. Like, do you have any experiences or stories like that you could share with maybe people that are watching that are finding themselves in similar situations? Um, I mean, similar to what you just said, I, I think that sometimes you got to allow yourself time, you know, that you can't, you can't measure your success and whether or not you're going to make it or not, or it's going to happen um, by the standards that are placed on you. Sometimes yeah. it takes a lot of time. Sometimes, um, you know, what you're doing right now may have some effect later on. Hundred you know? percent. Yeah. And yeah. so, like again, Kogi didn't happen to me until my my mid thirties. Mm -hmm. You know, and so if it would have happened to me way earlier, I don't know if I could have been able to control it. Yeah. You know, be, patient, it. be patient yeah. and don't give up. You know? Don't Keep give grinding. up. My parents called me a failure from a young age. So I was like, it's all uphill from here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got a caller. This is Brian. What's up, Brian? How's it going? Hey, um, so I just have a lot of trouble with relationships. I haven't really had one in a while. And I don't know, know how to act when I finally will find myself in one. So like, mm. what can I do to prepare to when, when I finally find myself in a relationship? Mm. Uh, can I ask if it doesn't bother you how old you are? I'm 25. Okay, so you have some like, you have some life experience. You well, still... I, I've found that in this day and age, you can be, you can be fun and weird and whatever, you know? And yeah. I think you guys, right now, this generation, you guys have much more, like I come from, the generation of the 90s where you had to be hard, you know, like yep. you, couldn't, you, you couldn't like show too much, you know, uh, as saying, a man. You could be honest about where he's but, at. But, yeah. Yeah, but you could, yeah, you couldn't admit to things. You couldn't show your feminine right. side as a man. You couldn't do all, all those things back in the 90s. But now, like, you can be whatever you want to be. So I would say, let yourself go. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Let be your honest about where you're, what your experience honest, is at. Yeah. That's actually really great advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, we're allowed to do that. You're yeah. allowed we're allowed to do, to do that now. The environment is very conducive for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like any relationship, whether it's romantic or not, it's all about communication in the end. Right. And yeah. like, I know my family, we're pretty terrible at communication. So that's something that I <laughs> yeah. constantly work on. Like, okay, I know nobody can read my mind. So if I have, an issue I need to speak up and yeah. so I feel like yeah. again it's about it's about that communication For with sure. that person okay all right, all right. I hope that's hope that helpful helped. thank you so much for calling yeah. and being a part of the show we appreciate it we love hearing from you guys well we know uh you know Roy could be charging big bucks as a life coach so you're getting a real deal here <laughs> today stay tuned guys peace that's right and we'll also check in on Gianni and get Roy's verdict we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> Back and we've been talking about late bloomers with Roy Choi. If you're a late bloomer and joining us tonight, you can catch up on what you missed on VOD tomorrow. Roy, do you think uh, being a chef is, is the main event of your life or is there more to come, you think? The main event at least. Oh man, I appreciate that question because I feel like I'm going through that right now. Mm. I feel like I'm evolving into something else, kind of like I want to have a production company. I want to, you know, I don't want to be always in the center of attention or in front of the mm -hmm. camera. I want to start providing opportunities for the next generation, you know, and developing, being my own kind of production, my own AR, my own whatever. Definitely. And so I see that ahead of me. The tough thing real quick about being a chef, though, is like you carry that with you forever. Yeah. So it's kind of like when it's hard to step away from being a chef because it's like once you become a chef, it's yeah. like if you leave, people say you're a sellout. So. It's like a gang. It's eh. like a gang. Yeah. <laughs> you get jumped in, you gotta get jumped out. You gotta out. get jumped out. So. Um, I wanna talk about this, cause I've been seeing this a lot in your mm -hmm. IG story, you doing some floral arrangements, oh, right? Yes. We got some pictures over here. Oh, there they are. This was unexpected, you know? Yeah. Uh, what made you get into this? Man, like I told you about the 90s, man. I couldn't talk about this in the 90s, <laughs> you know? Uh, but uh, I've always loved floral arrangements. I always, I've always, 
felt like it was something that was a part of my life and I just never confronted it. And with the pandemic, I had, a, I had time to confront, you know, and I've been around flowers a lot because in the restaurant industry, we have flowers in the restaurant, you know? Yeah. And I, I used to, when I'm prepping, I used to watch the floors come in and do the flowers and stuff like that. It was just like a secret passion and uh, the pandemic allowed me to like figure that out. And so I tried to figure out my own style. Like, you know, I've seen so many great florists and um, I knew I couldn't like, I don't have the training for that. So I had to figure out like, what's my style. So my style became kind of like this uh, mason jar look with like yeah. this, the stalks looking like pickled asparagus. This a one, bit. pickled yeah. asparagus. Yeah, yes. and, then, and then like, I, I kind of went for these kind of like tonal like uh, themes, you know, yeah. Yeah. purple, pink, yellow. This is so symbolic of our episode of blooming and all right here. For yeah. sure. <laughs> Real beautiful right here. Yeah, man, it's a great community. It felt, it felt like, um, it, it like really revived me. It felt like becoming a chef again, because the wholesale market, all the vendors, I used to go in the morning and they remember you and you build relationships. Oh, wow. And, you and actually then, went, so you were like going to yeah, I used to go places. to downtown every morning and, wow. and pick them up. And then, and then once I started putting them up on IG like that, um, I didn't realize there's a huge community of like florists out there that were just giving me so much love and advice and, you know, they were DM DMing me like little little tricks and like, you know, yeah. this is what you have to look forward to next. I definitely went down like the terranium hole on YouTube. Oh yeah. Yeah, some beautiful stuff, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, getting into what house plants and flowers is like the wave yeah, right you, now you, on you, yeah, IG, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I put a little flower on, I get the DMs from the girl, it's a whole thing, <laughs> yeah. a whole strategy. Um, I gotta ask, I gotta say, so what is the, uh, you said you wanted to go into production. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there stuff that uh, you're working on now? Yeah, you they know, I mean, uh, I'd love to, you know, bring, um, I wrote a book called L.A. Sun, which is kind of mm -hmm. like an autobiography. Um, I would love to bring that to life, to, to the screen, you know, whether it's a movie or a, uh, a, a streaming series. Um, I'm going to play you. I'm going to audition. Yes. <laughs> I got to get it out because yeah, you're, yeah, real you're getting older. So. Let me do a quick line real quick. Let me do a quick line. Number 34, <laughs> two gogi tacos and a burrito. <laughs> there it is. And scene. There it I is. We at. need that clip. Nailed it. That was cool. Nailed it. Nailed uh, it. I got the part. HBO holla at me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about like this concept that you don't have to change the world to change your world. Mm. You don't have to change the world. Oh, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I'm not good at politics or like soapboxing or like big things. I've never been good at like understanding like the big macro picture of like, how do we solve like the world's problems? But I've always been good with taking care of people that are right next to me. You know, even yeah. before I had something, you know, like I was always, my nickname used to, on, on social media used to be riding shotgun because I was mm -hmm. always the homie that was like right there, you know? Yeah. Like, and I was always someone that, you know, if I had something, I would break it in half and give you half. So I've always been good at that, that, that very intimate one-on-one -on -one moment. So. I've just taken that and, and, and kind of translated that to what I do as a professional and as someone that has a platform. You know? And so I know there are bigger problems in the world, but I focus in on what's like most immediate to me. And that's uh, things like Community. restaurant, local yeah. and Watts, you know, yeah. um, you know, the, the lack of access within um, South Central Los Angeles, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, the lack of access to jobs, food, even Wi-Fi, coffee shops, all yep. these things. So I, I just try to you know, take care of the people that are closest to me and let that have an echo effect that goes out. And you're bringing that, the A-list celebrities. Yeah, and bring to, everything to I got issues. to the That's issues. Dope. Yeah, That's yeah. something I've always admired you for and oh, really look you. up to you for that. We talk about food a lot mm -hmm. on my own live streams and this yeah. is like a constant topic that comes uh -huh. up for us. So yeah. when I saw your come up, I was just like, yes, oh, this is somebody who's you. doing it right. And I really cool. have always respected you for that. Oh, thank you. So we're gonna take a call. We've got Nisha on the line. What's up, Nisha? Oh, there she is. Hey, hey. hey how you Video doing? Video call, yes. Hi. What's your question for us? Um, so I have never had alcohol before in my life, and I have um, hit my 30s and definitely feeling like a late bloomer here. Mm. Um, any advice on taking that plunge? Any advice on taking the plunge uh, into uh, trying alcohol for the first time at, at the age of 30? Is what there is there a reason why? Um, so in high school, I had some friends who were just underage drinking and um, were, was in a car wreck and, you know, passed away. My sister and I decided 
well, hey, we want this to mean something, so we're not going to make the same mistake they did. Mm -hmm. um, so we decided, you know, hey, we're going to wait until, you know, we're of legal oh, age to yeah. start drinking. Legal age kind of came and it yeah. went. Yeah. And um, yeah, so my sister, she took the plunge, um, but I haven't yet. Okay. Wow. Well, I, I would... Um... Definitely don't start with Bacardi 151. No. You know, don't, don't, don't start there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I would, you know, because where you are in life right now, where we all are in life, I would start with natural wines, natural orange wines, you know, really cold, beautiful from small winemakers. Uh, there's a lot of winemaker, uh, uh, winemakers, small vineyards, um, people of color, you know, women winemakers, you know, and the and the, the, the flavor is just so delicious. It's almost mm -hmm. like drinking juice, mm -hmm. you know, unfilter, okay. unfiltered apple cider type feeling. Yeah. Um, but it's such a it's such a niche little world that not only will you experience alcohol, but you'll be a part of a community that is very loving and that is um, searching and reaching for something better. You know what I mean? So check out natural orange wines. Yeah. And I'm okay. sorry to hear you went through yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Thanks Nisha. for the advice. Yeah, uh -huh. thank you so thank much. Thank you so Nisha. much. Thanks Good for your luck. call. Good luck. Bye. Okay, I feel like I'd be still trying to boil water at this point, but we're going to check on <laughs> our man Gianni <laughs> and how he's doing with his romantic dinner. Gianni, what's good? Hey. hey How's guys. it going? What's up? <laughs> it's good. We have the final complete meal right here. Oh, wow. Complete? Whoa. There it is. Wow. Yo. What? We got, was it, was so that? I ended up... I ended up using the uh, pineapple juice and put the frozen watermelon in yeah, here as like uh -huh. an ice cube. Um, and then we have the pasta with the blended kimchi and the sauce and the goiza right over the top. Yeah, the pasta. Wow. It's like a little, yeah, it looks like little ravioli. Yeah, we talked to what Gianni think, a little Roy? bit. Yeah, you know, in between. Yeah, we have and a little garnish on there too. It's great. You know, like that's where I think you can really impress a person where that you make things a little bit of a surprise. Like the ice cube is the watermelon, you know, and then you have. You're mixing cultures. You have fried wontons, but on pasta. But then it looks like tomato <laughs> pasta. But then when they when he eats it, it's gonna, you know, be spicy. So you're a cultured. You're gonna look like a cultured man. Yes. That's what he's yeah, saying. That's what he's saying, yeah. man. <laughs> you're a that's real impressive. Awesome. That's impressive. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Are Thank you... you for the recipe. Are yeah. you nervous? <laughs> um, I'm a little nervous. Um, first dates are always kind of weird, but. Um, I'm hoping this meal really takes the pressure off oh. and he'll be impressed. Well, did you try it yet? Does it taste good? You try it? You get a taste? I haven't tried it yet. <gasps> oh, try, okay. it it. It. try it first. Hold on, let's try it first. Let's try it right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright. He's gonna be biased. No. <laughs> let's see how it is. Perfection. Oh, oh, perfection. Wow. I wanna try it now. And you can also rip this video and say it was Roy Choi approved. Yeah, yes. okay. Is he a pastry <laughs> chef in LA? He is, yeah. Okay, then tell him it was from me. And yeah, Roll might points. even know to do it, yeah, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, Gianni, awesome. good luck with your day, yes. man. Let us know how it goes. Good luck, and thanks for awesome. being with us. Thank you, Gianni. Well, thank we you got, so much. Yep, yeah, we got to take a break, but when we come back, the Master Chef gives his final master advice. Stay tuned, everybody. Yes. That is so cool. I love it. Welcome back. We're here with Roy Choi talking about being a late bloomer. Roy, do you think things would have turned out differently if you would have achieved your success at 25? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> In a good yeah. way or a bad way? I don't know, good or bad, but I wouldn't, I, Kogi probably wouldn't have survived if I had it at 25. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would have, I would have been wilding out. So I would have probably drove it into the ground. I would have been mm. sleeping with everyone and any, anyone. I would have been spending money out the door, I would have probably not paid attention to the details and the food. I probably wouldn't have, as, have been as honest. And, right. and it would have been also about me beating people and an huh. ego and, you know, um, and winning, you know, like the great thing when it came later was I didn't have to like, I wasn't competing with anyone. I was yeah. just literally trying to feed the streets. But back yeah. then I probably would have been a little more um, competitive, 
you know, yeah. so that would have affected me. And I remember we've talked about this in the past, and you know, now you've owned these businesses, yeah. but you were saying that you kind of wore the hat in every position, right? Like yeah. you've, you've tried being the waiter, the host, yeah. the assistant chef, all to all these things to finally understand what yeah. each role how important each role is to have your own business. Well, that's a good thing about late blooming too, is that if it comes later, then you've had this kind of mental, mental mu that muscle memory, this mental uh -huh. uh, experience so that you can reach back when mm. situations get tight. Like, I don't know how it is for you, but like when you hit it at 18 or 17 or 20, um, like what are you pulling from? And in many cases, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you're just creating, but yeah. for, for those that maybe like a chef, like when they come out, out of the gates really hot but they don't have that much experience sometimes yeah. they don't know how to make certain dishes the foundation I mean? is very important is during that time um i was yeah. gonna ask you what's one piece of advice that you would give to all or to, uh, you know that we would all give to our 21 year old selves um oh uh, <laughs> I, I i i just say um you know you know it's not about beating people yeah. You know, it's not about winning. It's not a competition. It's not a competition. Yeah. You know, you can be competitive, but it's not about destroying so that you can win. Right. You right. know, that uh, love does have a power. I love that. Know? It really does. Definitely Sasha? does. I would have to say trust your ideas 100% because I dealt with a lot mm. of ageism and um, there were things that I just didn't go after that I wish I would have yeah. in mm. retrospect. So okay. that would be it for me. Well, I would say uh, that the journey is the reward. So soak in and yeah. savor all those hardships and all those the, all those moments along the way. You yeah. Know? Uh, well, Roy, thank you for being here, man. Oh, we man. appreciate it. We that love you. So fast. It flew by fast, right? Yeah. Okay. And right. as always, we're live every Wednesday and Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Next Wednesday, we also have Andy Allo from Amazon's Upload. If you haven't checked out Upload yet, do it. The concept is a trip. And don't forget to give Austin Show some love this Saturday. Their package premieres at 3 p.m., guys. Uh, unfortunately, we got some sad news during the show. Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman passed away after a battle with cancer. Rest in peace to a hero on and off the screen. He will definitely be missed. Our thoughts go out to his family. Thank you so much for watching, Gray Area. Good night, everybody. Roy, thank you so much.